So if you set up a stock screener, you want to start going deeper and really filtering much harder on the market. You'll want to use some of our advanced rule types. I'm going to show you each of those sequentially in this video and it shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Let's say you've set up and you clicked uh, to create a new screen. Click the blue add rule button and we're going to add the price to earnings ratio. So I've loaded it up, which you can find either from the nav or by searching. And a basic rule would be this blue button. I'm showing you that again. Let's say we want to search for P ratio less than 12. Now, that's all very well if you know the distribution of uh, the PE ratio. If you don't, there's a way you can use one of our more advanced rules, uh, which saves you from having to remember it. So again, find the PE ratio and click add advanced rule. You can see this little menu pops up and I'm going to use a ranking rule. Now this takes that metric, and, but in the background we create a rank from 0 to 100 as a percentile for that financial ratio. And that means that, in a, 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 let's say 90 plus, will be the, the, the cheapest 10% of the market for this PE ratio. Um, so the, if the ranking market is greater than 90, that means we've got the 10% cheapest stocks in the market. And you can really, really go hard at this or loose at this as you wish. So 95%, this is the top 5% cheapest stocks in the market. And you can start seeing here down below that the P is very, very, very low for these stocks, only three or so. So if you're using that in a set of other rules, you might want to be a little bit less stringent. Let's say you wanted to look at the top 25% of the market. So that's how to screen the market by rank for a metric. But what if you want to compare stocks against the average? We have two ways of doing that. Once again, I'm going to use the price earnings ratio as an example. Click add advanced rule and let's look at the average or the mean of uh, the market. This allows us to look at the P ratio against a certain multiple of the market average of that financial ratio. So let's just say we want to look at the P ratio is less than one times the market average. So that means it's less than um, half the market average of the P ratio. So these will be generally cheaper than the average in the market. Similarly, we also <coughs> provide the median, which can sometimes be quite useful because financial ratios can often be very skewed at one end or other of the distribution. And if you have, for example, in, with, with a, a market capitalization, where you get some companies that have billions and billions and billions of market cap, whereas there's lots of little tiddlers, sometimes using a median rather than the mean means that it won't be as skewed. So I'll show you how to do that. P ratio less than one times the median, or if you want to get even more stringent, it could be half times the median, etc. Um, you always have to bear in mind whether Lower is, lower is good or higher is good for a particular ratio. If you were looking at growth, you might want to be looking for companies that were greater than the market median or market average. The nice thing is that when you do click add rule and you look at, let's say, uh, a, a earnings per share growth, if you add that as an advanced rule, it will immediately load with the default for that ratio um, as the operator. So earnings per share growth greater than one times the market median, whereas the P ratio has been loaded with less than. So it will instantly remind you which way to look. The nice thing about the ranking, using the ranking rule, is that um, you don't have to remember the order of the distribution. So the P ratio, or let's say if you're looking at growth rates, if you want to find the top 10 or 25%, 100 is always standardized as best for each financial ratio. Um, and I believe there's one more, uh, advanced uh, ratio, uh, advanced rule that we can look at. And this is a compare. So let's click compare and find out what that's about. You can look at here, the price earnings ratio for each stock being less than a certain multiple, let's say less than one times or two times another financial ratio. So some people like comparing the price earnings ratio against the price to book ratio, or they might like looking at um, the earnings per share uh, against the dividends per share. And this is a nice way to compare two different fields. Um, let's have a look at the price to book ratio, uh, if I can find that and add this. Let's say we want the, the P ratio to be less than three times price to book. 
that's the way that we might be able to screen for it. So this gives you a nice set of more complicated rules for those who want to go deeper and have a bit of understanding of how to use these. They're quite simple to use, but they do require a little bit more financial knowledge and understanding. But I hope this gives you a very good and useful introduction to get you started. If in any doubt, go and check the Financial Ratio Glossary, which is, as I, as I showed, always available on each field in uh, the Ratio Picker so you get the full description and often some hints on how to screen for that data point. Um, in fact, let me point out that at the bottom, you will often see a little bit of what we call metadata about that financial ratio. And so if you're in any doubt, value PE, it ranks low to high. So lower is better and it's nicely spelled out there for you. So that's my one last insight for this video. Cheers, all the best.